name is Yasa Maneja from the Mindfulness Center located in Bethesda, Maryland. We have with us here Dr. Rudolf Bauer. He is editor of Transmission, the journal of the awareness field, and he's also co-director of the Washington Center of Consciousness Studies and a psychologist in, in the Washington, D.C. area. We're here today as part of Mind Body Week. It's October 12th today, and Dr. Bauer has just spoken. Thank you, Dr. Bauer. Um, we're going to be asking you some questions today. First one, um, we wanted to know what part will the mind body sciences play in preventative care? I think that's a great question, and I, th I will frame it this way. I think the mind body care is already playing a great role but there's a transition that's going through. And the first phase, I think, is so fantastically described by Dr. Benson today on the research done on the whole mind-body connection and how it influences illness and the genetic, the live genetic strain. Right. And the next phase is the phase of the relational aspect of the mind-body. That the mind-body thing is not just here and here, it's actually here also. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where the research is going and that whole relational component of our mind and body is, is becoming more and more into focus and studying how can we study the relational aspect of the mind-body experience. And I believe in terms of many of the different traditions that are enunciated this, but not from a totally research point of view, how we communicate to each other, what we think, what we feel in the presence of each other does influence our mind body and also influences the genetic system. That's where the book went. What do you see as the biggest problems in healthcare and how can we solve them? <clears throat> the biggest problems in healthcare is not the doctors, and it's not the patients, and it's not goodwill, it's corporations. Right now in Washington, we're having these large corporation protests right now. Are you with me? Yes. And that is essential to this whole thing. Are you with me? The corporation world deconstructs the healthcare system slowly but surely. Where the finances of the corporations reap does harm to both the physicians and the patients. That is the crisis right now. And we're seeing it's beginning to be played out with much more force. It's a political corporate problem. Do you mean in terms of employee wellness? Do you mean in terms of corporations? Health, for people, how much people have to work. You can go down the list, how people have to work, the easy firing of people, the whole corporate mentality that dominates our society is there's starting to be a movement with that. Just like you had the spring in the East, right? The, the Arab Spring, okay. which went against the, the, the non-democratic components of, of their society. There's a rising right now a, 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 a willingness to go against corporate life. It's just beginning. Many people write about this, many academics write about that, but they're only academics. So the major problem is political and corporate. Not know-how, not goodwill, not great doctors or great patients, but how this works as a system really is uh, the real problem. And what can we do to make a change? I think right now, <clears throat> That's a great question. You know, I, th I think from a lot of different forces and a lot of different movements, I think that's beginning to happen right now. And so I think right now, October 12th, there's a step towards that. Through Mind Body Week and events like this? I think through the political activity that's taking place in Washington, D.C., as people are starting to protest corporate life. See, all this stuff is, it's not just pure science. It's not just the doctor-patient relationship. It's the context that we're in. Right. Context determines experience. Context determines what happens to people. Context determines stress. Context effects. 
Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on using the words alternative in alternative health when speaking to the mind-body sciences? I think the word alternative is a very difficult and troublesome word because it has a person having to go through a linkage that is not user-friendly, that feels unfamiliar, feels troublesome, feels radicalizing, feels unfamiliar and strange and not part of how things should really work. Just like the beautiful talk by Herb Benson today, pharmaceuticals, surgery, self-care. Right. And unless that's balanced, the system is not working in a balanced way. An alternative is really an inappropriate word. What about health choice instead? And what does the effect of linguistics have, or, the, or word choice have, on how we make choices when it comes to our health? Our, our unconscious is very much formed by linguistic symbols, whether we like it or not. It's not just a ceiling cauldron of it impulses, but it's linguistic symbols. And those symbols have all sorts of associations that if we're using the wrong symbol, only certain type of people with certain type of histories can make alternative decisions. So you want a language, I don't know what the word is, complementary, whatever word, or maybe no word at all. Maybe it's just part of the whole system. Maybe no word at all is the best word. Thank you, Dr. Bauer. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking today. Thank you.